AOC does not want Joe Biden. She represents the, the quote unquote justice Democrat wing of the party, the radical wing of the Democratic Party, the wing of the party that Nancy Pelosi has derided as having about three people, but she does get all the publicity. She's going after Joe Biden. She's apparently deciding between Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders right now. If she endorses Elizabeth Warren, that could in fact be a death knell for Bernie Sanders' lagging campaign. Yesterday, however, her chief focus was going after Joe Biden, who she certainly doesn't want as the nominee because he's quote unquote too moderate. Here she is slamming Biden over his supposed middle of the road stance with regard to climate change. I will be damned if the same politicians who refuse to act then are gonna try to come back today and say we need a middle of the, the, middle of the road approach to save our lives, that is too much for me. We cannot, we cannot, and we will not accept anything less than a solution to save ourselves, and that's exactly what this is. Okay, so that is a slap at Joe Biden. Joe Biden responded by saying, no, 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 no. She's not slapping at me. Everyone took it as a slap at Joe Biden because it basically was. I mean, Joe Biden himself was booed when he was mentioned as having supposedly said that he had a middle of the road stand on climate change. Now he says, I'm not middle of the road. Guys, guys, I'm far left. Like, just, just love me, love me. I've never been in the middle road on the environment. And I tell her to check, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the statement that I made and look at my record, she'll find that nobody has been more consistent about taking on the environment and a green revolution than I have. And so, look, uh, anyway, but I, so I, 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 I can't, I don't think she's talking about him. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't think she was talking about him? Uh, yeah, Joe, she, she was talking about you. And if you think you're going to escape so easily, I mean, he sounds old there. He really does. And it's a problem for him because the new vibrant wave of youthful Democrats, they've got all the passion and all the, all the moves and they're hip and they can dance. They're, they're really not gonna accept the John Lithgow figure that is Joe Biden when it comes to their, their full push for socialism. And Joe Biden, again, he is trying to escape the ramifications of the fact that he is moderate enough to win a general election, but too moderate for the, the excited wing of his base. And that does make a difference, right? If your base is not super excited about you, if they are mostly motivated by how much they don't like the other guy, they better hate that guy with a rampant passion. And they must, they, they better feel like it's an emergency. Like if the economy is good, and if things are generally okay in their lives and they just don't really like Trump very much, I'm not sure that that is enough to get them over the hump. That means that you have to have one of two things, either broad public appeal or a very, very excited base, right? Donald Trump barely got over the hump against a candidate that Republicans loathe, Hillary Clinton, because there was a segment of the base that was super excited about Donald Trump. Okay. I'm not sure who in the Democratic base is super excited about Joe Biden. They hope that he has broad appeal. The problem is that he may have to choose between the broad appeal and the very excited base. You know, the people who are gonna go knock on doors, the people who are going to spend their days phone banking. Are those people gonna do that for Joe Biden? It's a serious question. And AOC, Bernie Sanders, they're ripping on Joe Biden about this. Here's Bernie Sanders you know, subtweeting Joe Biden on climate change. When you're dealing with the future of the planet and making sure that our kids and our grandchildren have a healthy and habitable world in which to live, I don't know how you go too far. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is an existential threat, not just to the United States, but to the entire planet. We have a moral obligation to combat climate change, to bring the entire world together. This is not an American issue. This is a global issue to bring the world together, to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energies. And uh, to me, we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. We have to not elect Joe Biden. It's the only way. So this is Bernie Sanders' pitch. And also it's Bernie Sanders who's pushing Medicare for all. A proposal so popular with the Democratic base that all of the fence sitters like Kamala Harris have come down in favor of it, at least when they're not against it. Joe Biden, however, has said that he does not support turning Medicare into a national health insurance program for everyone because, quote, the vast majority of people are satisfied with their own health care system today. He said he favors making a Medicare option available to all people in which you'd be able to keep your own insurance if you are satisfied. So he is in favor of a, quote, unquote, public option. But the problem with the, quote, unquote, public option is that if people are opting into Medicare and doctors are not taking Medicare, well, then you're not going to be getting very good care through Medicare. It's one of the reasons why people like Joe, uh, why, like people, people like Bernie Sanders, who are Medicare for all proponents, have said we need to eliminate private health insurance as an option because too many healthy people are going to be buying private health insurance. And that means that Medicare for all is going to be incredibly expensive. Basically, the only people who are going to get Medicare for all or, or Medicare for 
uh, a public option, are going to be high-risk people. So the government absorbs the cost for all the high-risk people. The reimbursement rates are too low. Those people still can't get care from the doctors that they want. So we have to force everyone into one giant pool via Medicare for all. The question in health insurance is always risk pools. And the problem is that if you, if you bifurcate the risk pools into healthy people and non-healthy people, and the non-healthy people end up on the government dole, and the healthy people all end up getting private health insurance, then the government ends up footing an enormous, enormous burden in order to get those people health care in the first place. So that, that, that is why the, the Joe Biden plan has largely been opposed by Democrats. On the other hand, it's been opposed by Republicans, the public option, because there is the looming risk that public option quickly turns into Medicare for all, because the government can also subsidize at a rate that no one else can. So you could see a world where the government starts subsidizing Medicare for the, the public option, and everybody simply dumps their private health insurance. Employers start dumping private health insurance and tossing people onto the Medicare rolls, and private insurance industry dies, and then doctors are basically roped into de facto Medicare for all. So Joe Biden has picked the least popular option. The public option option is actually the least popular option. There's Medicare for all, hardcore Bernieites love that, and then there's private health insurance without a public option, and Republicans are generally in favor of that. And then there is the public option option, which is so unpopular that Barack Obama couldn't even get a public option through his own party. Right? He controlled the Senate and the House. He could not get a public option through his own party. That is Joe Biden's position because he's quote unquote moderate. 